Twin Saga was released in open beta on the 1st of September 2016 and is published by Area Games and developed by X Legend. In case you've never heard of X Legend, it's a Taiwan based MMO developer that releases a new anime inspired chibi MMO every year or two, and then moves on to the next game. In fact, about 6 months after Twin Saga released in Taiwan, they put out a new trailer for their new MMO, La Place. Mm hmm. Alright then. Twin Saga has a tab targeting combat system that tries so hard to look and feel like it's action combat, to the point that it ruins what little combat mechanics it actually has. You have 10 classes to choose from and each class has 7 skills, two of which are common skills that can be used with any class. Each class also has 3 ultimate abilities which are all the same. Each with distinct effects, huh area games? Tell me, does this look like a goddamn Sundering Arrow to you? No, it doesn't. You don't use mana in the game. Instead, each of your 7 class abilities generates SP which can be used to activate your ultimate and senshi abilities. Senshi are basically useless pets that do no damage and allow you to use special skills that also do no damage. Seriously, if I'm doing 15,000 damage, why is my pet doing 66 damage? The only thing they really do is give you stat boosts when they're equipped and upgraded, which is nice, but they're still useless as a pet. Area Games claims that this game has an endless supply of thrilling action. Yes, thrilling. What a thrilling roller coaster of fun this is. Woo. It's just all so generic and lazy. The thing tab targeting games have going for them is their large pool of abilities to choose from and you took that away. Where's the fun in that? But on the bright side, you can change classes without worrying about level and gear. All gear is universal, so you don't need a special set for each class. Class level also doesn't seem to matter for your base stats. It only matters for unlocking class abilities and class specialization points. Each class has two basic specializations and an advanced specialization that unlocks at level 42. These specializations increase your stats by a percentage based on level and give you passives such as healing when you crit or having a 20% chance to increase your attack damage whenever you use an ability. You also have star stones, which are basically just 12 gems you equip to your character. You can upgrade and evolve them and they give a flat stat boost. Some of the rarer star stones have extra stat boost, but nothing too interesting. Professions also increase your stats as you level them. The available professions are fishing, gathering, farming, alchemy, cooking, and crafting. You level the first three professions by, I shit you not, AFKing in front of the node of the appropriate level. Yeah. On the overworld, you'll see nodes of various levels placed around for fishing, gathering, and farming. Just go to the node of your level, right click, and AFK. Occasionally you'll have the chance to do a quick time event for some slightly rare materials, but that's really all there is to it. For the other three professions, you need to go to your Terra Cottage, which is your mobile housing. You can teleport to it by pressing H and choosing the main hall, greenhouse, or workshop. The Terra Cottage has a few NPC merchants for crafting, some crafting benches, and allows you to get quests from your senshi. You can also place furniture in your Terra Cottage if you want to, though I didn't really bother crafting any. Really, you get all the stuff you'd expect from player housing. But it just all feels so lazy. Combat and gameplay is also boring and bland, and they try to cover it up with flashy animations and chibi anime graphics. It's like getting shot in the leg and putting a big band-aid over it. Yeah, you're not gonna see the wound as much, but you still have a goddamn bullet in your leg. God created the earth and twin goddesses. The twins disagreed over how to rule their people, and in the end, one lost her powers and fell to earth. It's pretty much it, and it's pretty uninspired and the story and questing in the game doesn't get much better. For whatever reason, almost every quest ends up with you killing X amount of enemies or collecting X amount of an item. The absolute most generic questing you could possibly imagine. And the story and immersion isn't helped by the fact that most NPCs are just reskins. In fact, let's play a little game. Let's count how many reskins there are of these two guys right here in the starting town.
You get the point? They couldn't even put a little effort in the starting town. They didn't even bother trying to hide their laziness. But anyway, you also have things called astral quests. While in the overworld, you activate them by walking up to these floating blue squares and accepting them. You go through these conversations making occasional choices without actually fighting or taking part in any way. You can do them 10 times a day and doing them grants you an XP boost at last 24 hours. It's really nothing to write home about. It's a mechanic that could have easily been so much more than it is if they'd actually bothered. Instead of quests just being conversations you have to skip through to get your XP bonus, why not make them short stories with puzzles, special mechanics, and choices that actually matter? That could have actually been a lot of fun. The leveling in this game is horrible. It starts off fine, but once you reach level 48, you hit the biggest grind wall I have seen in a while. You run out of main mission stories until level 56, so the only content you have left is dungeons, daily quests, and grinding. At level 49, doing all my dailies for that day and finishing a few dungeons gave me a fourth of a bar. In case you were wondering, max level is 65 right now and going to be 75 later. After you finish your daily solo dungeon entries, you can only do party and nightmare dungeons. Which would be fine if the party find feature actually worked better. You know, I actually did the math on how long it would take you to grind. At level 49, a level 49 mob gives 0.002% XP. That's 50,000 enemies you have to kill, or 12,500 groups of 4 enemies. If you kill each group and find a new one within 10 seconds, it would take you 33.7 hours to level up to 50. It is absolutely ridiculous that that can end up being your only content. So as far as I can tell, here's how the game works. Early on, you gain experience very, very fast. The game does this to get you interested early on by constantly giving you positive reinforcement. You're leveling fast, getting new gear and mechanics, and classes are leveling so fast, it's easier to switch and try a new one whenever you want. By the time you hit level 48, you're invested. You've probably made friends in the game, joined a guild, and maybe spent some money. You don't want to give up now, so you power through it. And after a week or two of grinding, doing dailies, and farming dungeons, you finally made it to level 56. You finally get new missions, and these give you 6.4 million experience. To give you an idea, at level 49, you need 16,895,640 experience, and the average daily gives around 340,000. That's 50 quests you need to do to level up to 50, and you don't have that many dailies. At level 56, you need 195,150,000 experience to level up, and with the 6.4 million experience, that's 31 quests you need to do. You're hooked again. You start leveling faster and the grind is over until level 61. At level 61, the quest experience drops down to 4 million and you hit another grind wall. The game has to do this because there is no actual content. Grinding and farming dungeons is all the game actually has to offer, so the game uses this to make it seem like there's a lot to do. But trust me, there isn't. I couldn't play PvP. Trust me, I tried. I queued up constantly over the week, waiting over 40 minutes in queue, and I never once got in the game. Either no one is playing PvP, or the matchmaking is completely broken. Neither would surprise me. So, the end game. As far as I know, there is none. The end game seems to be more of the same. Level up other classes, max your profession to craft furniture and outfits, and do dungeons. Once you finish the grind wall, there's nothing left to do as far as I can tell. I'm sure this is going to get a lot of hate from people that actually like the game, and that's fine. Everyone's entitled to their opinion, but based on what I've played, I can't recommend the game, not even a little. There's so many other games out there that are far superior, and it's just not worth the time in my opinion. And I think it's fair to say that I'm not going to be making a tips video for this game either. If you've played Twin Saga, let me know what you think of it in the comments section. Also, let me know if there's a game you'd like me to cover next. If you like my content, consider subscribing for new videos every Wednesday. Thanks for watching, I hope this was helpful, and happy leveling.